We know now what LSU was willing to pay to keep Joe Brady in 2020, but will that be enough? And all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Ken Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, I want to talk about LSU passing game coordinator Joe Brady and what LSU has basically shown ahead of the college football playoff national championship they are willing to do to keep him on staff. Shouts to Ed Orgeron, who has made keeping Joe Brady a part of LSU's coaching staff a priority at a time when it felt like perhaps he could have been taking another job in college football or even a job in the NFL, and one of those has been eliminated because we have Sports Illustrated's Ross Dellinger going in on this saying, look, they have put together an agreement that says, in principle, Joe Brady will make $3 million over three years, $1 million a year to stay on as an offensive assistant at LSU in this really kind of weird pairing of a offensive coordinator and a play caller together in the booth calling plays. Haven't seen it before. Hopefully it works in that championship if you're an LSU fan, but even if it doesn't, it's really kind of odd. Because we've got a 30-year-old offensive assistant who was never heard from or heard of until last year when Steve Insminger went to Ed Orgeron and said, hey, I like this kiddo that we saw with the New Orleans Saints when we were doing some things with them. Maybe we want to bring him on. So February 3rd last year, they signed Joe Brady to a three-year deal. It's going to pay him about $430,000 and incrementally increase to about $450,000 over three years. Fast forward a year later, and he's looking at making a cool million as a 30-year-old. And this on top of the man had been an assistant at William & Mary, a grad assistant at Penn State, a flunky assistant for the Saints, and then passing game coordinator, offensive assistant for LSU. What I love most about Joe Brady's story is Sean Payton told him to take the job at LSU would have been a mistake and then cop to it saying, look, what do I know? Because he's watching what the Louisiana State Tigers have been able to do, and he's rooting for them like most folks in Louisiana. It's a very fun time to be a football fan in Louisiana. But thinking about what this means for Joe Brady, this agreement basically ties him not just to LSU, but more or less prevents him from taking another college football job, but does not prevent him from taking an NFL job, which seems like where he wants to go. So as much as you might be able to rule out things like Joe Brady to Baylor, which is right now the best Power 5 head coaching job that is still available, you cannot rule out perhaps Joe Brady being an offensive coordinator with the Carolina Panthers, for which his name has been brought up as late as last Friday. He said to media at the college football playoff national championship, he hopes to be a Tiger in 2020. But even if he is, how long can that keep up? If you want to ride with Steve Insminger and you are Ed Orgeron, it seems like he does, not going to be able to keep that up for very long. But it's nice for LSU fans to know that they're not going to lose Joe Brady to another offensive coordinator position, which would be a step up. Sharing play calling duties is not ideal, even when it's going well. And I understand that Joe Brady is a guy that avoids the spotlight whenever possible, but he seems like he's on a Lincoln-Riley path here. I need to couch that and Lincoln Riley was only an offensive coordinator for a few years right so an offensive coordinator at East Carolina he was an offensive coordinator at Oklahoma before he got the head job now say what you want about Lincoln Riley but he is 36 and 6 in three years at a time when it's really difficult to win college football games at the highest level as a head coach I'm gonna throw in there that Lincoln Riley is 0-3 in bowl games we all know it He's been 12-2, 12-2, 12-2 in three years. Nothing to sneeze at, but again, getting into the college football playoff and then losing that game every time you've been there is not a good look. But with Joe Brady wanting to go to the NFL in a way that Lincoln Riley has shown he does not want to go to the NFL, you still have something to worry about if you're the Tigers. I understand that people are going to feel some kind of way 
about it if LSU wins a national championship. They're going to be like, yo, Joe, do what you want to do. Maybe. Most LSU fans think they're going to be greedy and want to run it back, and I don't blame them for that. But if they lost this national championship game, I could also see it being one of those things where they want to keep him on. Hey, let's run this back. Let's see if we can do this with another quarterback because I've been of the opinion that this offense is great and this offense is outstanding. But is it really dependent on Joe Burrow? Is Can you duplicate this with another quarterback? Would you be able to get the same results with Miles Brennan, for instance? I don't think that you would. One, because Joe Burrow is just another sort of talent. And another because Miles Brennan ain't that dude. And I think if, for instance, Derek, Derek King became available to you, you might want to go get him. We know that Jamie Newman is already going to Georgia, so that removes run quarterback off the board. I also know that it's really, really difficult to say that Joe Brady's system wouldn't work wherever he wants to go. But I'm going to be fascinated because as a young man and mostly as a dude that's able to move and shake, we've seen that those guys want to move up. We've seen that those guys want to eventually get to coaching and running their own programs. Ed Orgeron is no different. I think about Sterling Gilbert, who stepped down as the head coach at McNeese so that he could be the offensive coordinator, we think, at Syracuse, and how that man has been iterant throughout his entire career. Many of you will forget that Sterling Gilbert gave the world Jimmy Garoppolo at Eastern Illinois, and at the time, he was the FCS Walter Payton Player of the Year and set a record for passing yards in a season with over 5,000. We know that Sterling Gilbert went on to be an offensive coordinator at TU, at uh, UT, and at USF before really taking over his own shop at McNeese. That was the first time he'd ever been a college football head coach. Now we'll see what he's able to do with Dino Bambers and the Syracuse or Orangemen. Getting back to Joe Brady, $3 million over three years is a lot of money, usually the kind of money that you're paying to an offensive coordinator, which also brings into question how much longer does Steve Ensminger want to do this? If he wins a national championship, would he want to run this back? Would he want to step down? We also know that he hasn't really had the proper amount of time to mourn the passing of his daughter-in-law and what that might mean for him. I know that that's got to weigh heavily on him and the staff and his family. What do they want going forward? Joe Brady might be in a position to be the heir apparent to that offensive coordinator position. And then you might be able to see what Ed Orgeron is able to do in keeping his staff together because he's been able to keep Dave Aranda as defensive coordinator there, which I thought was going to be the first assistant to take a job. He has not. Doesn't look like he will. And if he can keep both Joe Brady and Dave Aranda on this staff for the foreseeable future, there's no reason to believe that LSU can't continue to run this back. And at a time when Thaddeus Moss is out here talking all the smoke, which has been outstanding. I'll add to this. The last time that an LSU player talked this much noise, dropped 63 on Oklahoma. We'll see what this means for the college football playoff national championship. All right. That's it for me. This is.